Hey you going guys, Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. So today's job we have a 30 ton tilt bucket off a Hitachi excavator that's come in for repair. Tilt buckets are generally used on excavators for doing batter work and final trimming. They're not really a mass excavation bucket, but operators treat them like they are. So this isn't the first time we've seen this bucket. It did come in about five years ago when we first opened our business and it came in to have a floating pin upgrade. So we've done a video on that where we change out the center pivot position and upgrade the pins in the bushes to stop them from wearing out very quickly. When that bucket came in, it was only 12 months old and the center pivot position was completely worn out. So it's been about five years since I did the upgrade on that bucket and there is zero wear in the main pivot position. This bucket is off a wet hire machine, which means the company company who owns it will supply an operator and fuel and look after the maintenance. Over time, attachments are going to wear out. So the side cutters and the mouthpiece or the mold board have been affected the most due to erosion and abrasion because they are the first points of contact when the bucket is digging. So what we need to do, we need to gouge off the old mouthpiece and the side cutters and install new ones. We'll also be installing a wear package, which is going to include chockey bars, which are a wear block. And we're also going to be doing some hard facing and that will prevent the mouthpiece and the side cutters from wearing out early. And along with the wear package, we're gonna be fitting a brand new cutting edge. Something we encourage our customers to do when they do buy a new kit of attachments is to put wear packages on them before they go to work. As long as they keep on top of the maintenance with the wear packages, the buckets will generally last a very long time. So it does cost a little bit more in the beginning, but it does save a lot of money in repairs in the long run. One of the main parts of the wear package is not only to protect the mouthpiece of the bucket, but it is also to protect the bolts that hold on the cutting edge. Over time, abrasion will wear out those bolts and the cutting edges fall off. So I wasn't fully aware of all the damage that was done to this bucket. I only knew it was coming in for its mold board or mouthpiece and the side covers. After I cleaned the bucket, I discovered that a few of the wear strips on the bottom of the bucket were completely worn out and one is completely missing. So if any of you are operators, I really hope you don't do this to your buckets. Buckets are not hammers. They are used for digging and final trimming. The dints that we see in the bottom of tilt buckets is from lazy operators using them as a hammer. So in order to remove the bolts and all of the welds so I can get everything apart, I'm going to be using air art gouging. That is my preferred way of removing a lot of metal very quickly. So I don't actually have to remove the cutting edge because we are going to be replacing it. I could just cut the mold board out and leave the cutting edge attached. But I just want to show you guys how much wear these buckets go through and how sharp these edges end up simply from erosion.
Righto, so this situation really annoys me. This bucket is very worn out. It should really be here having a new skin and a complete wear package on the underside of the bucket, but we don't have the time in order to do that. I wasn't prepared for that. I don't have enough material here to make a new skin. So more than likely, this will be back in one to two months to have its skin replaced. But if the customer had pre-planned and done an inspection on this attachment, we could have had a skin here ready to go. So simply what we're going to do is what the customer has asked, and we're just going to patch everything else. I'm now going to cut out the side cutters and to do that I'm going to be using Oxy and LPG because it's going to give me a nice clean cut. Now I'm going to cut the weld prep. I'm not going to be using the Oxy. I am going to go back to the Air Art Gouger. I find it much easier to see how much metal you are removing and you have a lot more control with how much metal you remove. Whereas with the Oxy, it can be quite difficult to see how much material you're actually cutting and you might have to come back and do it again. Righto, so we've got all that material removed. I've got everything prepped and ground up. It is extremely windy outside. We've got about 40k an hour wind gusts coming through the igloo. It will be impossible to weld out here and it is very difficult to film. So we're gonna take it into the workshop so we can continue on with the job. Where'd you say they are? Oh. Yeah, George. 
Come back. George! Oh my god. Is that you, George? First thing we're going to do, we're going to fit and tack on the new side cutters. They are a piece of 25mm Biz 80 plate, so it is high tensile. Once we get those tacked in position, we can then fit and tack on the mould board, which is also Biz 80 grade and it is 32mm thick.
So now that we've got all that tacked in position, it's time to weld it out. So what we're going to be using is CIG Verticor in a 1.2, that is a dual shield wire. And the gas we'll be using to back that up is Argo Shield Heavy, which is 80% argon, 20% CO2. I'll be running that at about 27 volts and 7 meters of wire a minute. So the welding wire that I'm using, it is multi-positional, which means I can weld vertical up or overhead, but I much prefer to weld downhand because you're able to really push the wire and the amps into the job. Not only that, it is a lot more comfortable. You can see what's going on. You don't end up with slag inclusions in your weld and you end up with a very nice weld finish at the end. And because I have a yard crane and a forklift and I'm able to position this bucket in any position I want to, I can deposit a lot of material very quickly.
Now that we've got all of that welded, we're gonna start fitting our wear package. So what we have is a brand new 200 mil cutting edge. It is double beveled, so it can be flipped around. The cutting edge is longer than it needs to be, and that is because some bucket manufacturers will build buckets and adapt a standard size edge to them. Other manufacturers build a bucket and you have to buy an oversized edge and cut it down. In this case, we just need to trim a little bit off one end and it'll all be fine. And we've also got brand new plow bolts, nuts and washers to fit the cutting edge onto the bucket. Righto, now it's time to weld on our chockey bars, and they're called the chockey bar because they look like a chocolate bar. They are a very hard material that has been grafted onto a piece of mild steel, so you can weld them down to something. You can weld them pretty much wherever you've got a high wearing area, and the chockey bar will essentially wear out before you start wearing the parent material. Chockey bars are extremely hard, my file can't even scratch them. They are very inexpensive, so they are a great alternative when you're trying to put a wear package on something. So we're gonna cut individual blocks and they're gonna go in front and behind of each nut. And we're also gonna leave them as a complete bar and weld them up the side cutters of the bucket to protect it from wearing away. Cause as you saw on the side cutters we took off this bucket, they were basically a knife edge. So there is a fine line of having enough wear protection and too much protection. If you put too much wear protection on a bucket, the machine is going to lose productivity because it creates a lot of resistance while that excavator is trying to drag it through the ground. This is on a 30 ton machine, not a 250 ton excavator where those machines have the capacity and the horsepower to pull whatever you've got attached to them through the ground. Righto, so we've got all our chockey bars welded in place. What I need to do now is do the hard facing in between the chockey bars and across the face of the mouthpiece. To do that, we'll be using Studi 965G. That is a gas assisted hard facing wire. And the gas we're gonna be using is Argo Shield Metal Course. That's 90% argon, 10% CO2. Hard facing a surface is another way to avoid abrasion and material getting worn away while it's in its general operation of digging.
Right on guys, so we've got all the repairs completed on the bucket that we had planned for. We've got the new side cutters, the new mouthpiece, we've welded on the wear package and bolted on a new cutting edge. There is just one more thing I'm going to do and that is put a wear strip across the back of the bucket and patch up the heel so it doesn't wear all the way through the skin. So what I'm doing here is really just going to be a band-aid fix for this whole mess we've got on the bottom of the bucket. Ideally, I would have had the right pieces of material here so I could have gouged off the old stuff fitted new material and then put a complete wear package on the bottom of the bucket. We didn't plan for that and I wasn't notified it needed doing. So I'm just gonna use what material I have on hand to keep it going so the customer can get it back in the time frame they've allowed. So that patch repair is not to my standards. I'm not entirely happy about it, but there isn't enough material on the bottom of the bucket in order to put any more wear strips because everything is so thin. So we did what we could with what we had and we'll just have to wait for it to come back for a reskin. Right, Righto guys, so that is the job completed. So all up, a repair like this would take me between eight and 10 hours. We're gonna give our customer a call and get it back to them. Thanks for watching. And that is to prevent early erosion. Oh, fuck, I can think of another word here. Wearing out? Yeah, wearing out's a better word. So there is zero slop or, oh fuck, I had a word in my mouth then. Where'd it go? So a tilt bucket is generally used for batter work, final trimming, then, fuck off Trey. Any slag inclusion in your well, because you can see what's going on. What's this? It's like, uh, it leaves a really nice. Oh. Just, let me just start again. Oh my god. No, you... What? What me? What? Not you. Mm. Me for confuse me. <laughs> They've been like hammering with it. Wow, it's quite got a dent in that. Fucking Jesus. <laughs> it's like bowed in. Yeah, like a banana. Uses a, it uses a fucking hammer. Sorry for this fucking wind. Oh, it's fucked. <laughs> Start that shit. Okay. 